Hi, Mike Kennedy again with you, and we're looking at some rocks and minerals. Uh, as I've mentioned before, Maine is an igneous state. That means the rocks. There's been a lot of volcanic activity in, you know, in prehistoric times. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of pressure. We had the glaciers come over the state. But uh, what we find is that things have been crushed. Uh, different things, rocks, veins, heated rocks have gone into other rocks. Uh, we find very few fossils in the state of Maine because everything's basically been pressurized and crushed and molten, been molten at one time. So anyway, here's some examples of some of the uh, more common rocks we'll find in Maine. Uh, first we're going to look at mica. Okay, mica is an extremely interesting substance. It's a it can be peeled off in very thin layers. And unless you're on a video, then it doesn't. But uh, here we go. There you go, there's a piece of mica. Oh, let's take a picture through the mica. There we go, we're looking through the mica, kind of fuzzy. But stove windows. At one time, if you wanted to have a stove with a window in it, this is what you used was mica. It's a rock, it doesn't melt, not at least the temperatures that wood can provide. So it could provide windows. Now, another thing that you could make with this is a capacitor. What's a capacitor? Well, a capacitor is a substance, is an electrical part an active component that can store electricity or uh, can uh, alter it in some ways, let's say, just to be simpler. But a capacitor would be made by putting two pieces of metal on either side of a piece of mica. And you might have numerous pieces of metal with numerous pieces of mica in it. So uh, a uh, uh, mica capacitor would be something that would be very common that you would find in some older uh, equipment. Okay, now this is also mica here. This is uh, biotite mica. You can see if we get up uh, closer to it and we get it in focus, that uh, it has that same shiny thing but it's very black because again different chemicals contained within it. Biotite mica. Okay these are these are very common in Maine. Here's another thing that's very common and while initially this might look like quartz to some people this is actually feldspar and uh, once you get to look at your rocks you can tell these apart very easily. Uh, feldspar doesn't really have a translucent quality to it uh, like quartz does. And plus the patterning of it, the uh, every mineral, well I should say almost every mineral, has a unique uh, way that it forms a crystal. I mean, it, uh, not that other things don't have that crystal too, I shouldn't say unique, but what I'm saying is it will form one or two crystal forms so that just by looking at this the way it's shaped and the way these things are, I can kind of tell that it's feldspar and not quartz. Uh, feldspar, uh, we have a state park in uh, called Bradbury Mountain State Park, okay? And if you go up the trail to the top, one of the things you'll go by is a, mic is a feldspar mine. Feldspar at one time was mined in Maine to make fine china. Well, you know, we don't make anything here in the U.S. anymore, so fell into disrepair, disuse. A lot of, uh, Maine has a lot of minerals and a lot of mines, and a lot of the minerals were used for a lot of purposes. Uh, uh, we had beryllium that went into the Manhattan Project to make the first nuclear weapon. Uh, the Maine has a, a termaline. Now let's look at this. This at first look looks like 
a lump of coal. But this is actually tourmaline. And tourmaline, uh, most often found in Maine, is like this. It's just black and kind of ugly. Uh, here's tourmaline in kind of a both uh, quartz, but mainly felspar matrix. In other words, matrix is the word you say for what it's in. It's not just the movie. Okay, there was the word matrix before that. Uh, here we have felspar and uh, what appears to be uh, uh, tourmaline also. Now, how can I tell, just to look at this real quickly, that this is uh, not coal and it's tourmaline? Well, the specific gravity. And we don't usually say weight because weight connotates that, uh, you know, okay, which of, which of these rocks weigh more? Well, I can tell you right now, the felspar weighs more. But which one has a higher specific gravity? That actually means weight per volume. And by picking this up, the heft of this, I can also tell by, frankly, by looking at it, it's got a, uh, the surface on it is unlike what coal would look like. But the heft of it, or the specific gravity, tells me that it's uh, tourmaline and not coal. Uh, coal is, is, is fairly light compared to uh, this. This is quite heavy. So, also, uh, here I'm going to show this, and uh, here we have something here on the end of this. We've got the felspar, we've got some other intrusions of things in here, but what started to happen here is, uh, oh, we have some sunlight. Uh, this is a, this is a mica schist. When the mica gets all pressurized and, and kind of beat up, it turns into a mica schist. And schist is a word for that type of rock that that's what happens to it. It's heated and pressurized and it, it takes on another form. So there's a mica schist. So uh, here's just some more felspar now. In this felspar, if we look closely, we can actually see quartz in here. We see this kind of uh, semi-translucent uh, material in this, and that's actually uh, there's actually quartz mixed with this feldspar. Uh, let's go back and just for a minute about tourmaline. Okay, tourmaline can come in gem quality. Okay, tourmaline can form clear crystals, but what uh, and uh, in Maine, one of the biggest finds that you can read about is there's these boys in the woods and they stumbled and they fell over this rock that turned out to be worth back then, and this this was way back when, turned out to be $40,000 because of the, the tourmaline crystal that was in it. So now, uh, what's very popular in Maine, and I can't show you a picture because I don't own any, is watermelon tourmaline. And you can actually find tourmaline that's that's clear, but it has these impurities and it looks like a piece of watermelon. It has the red, it has the green and the red in it, and it actually looks like a little slice of, of a watermelon. So tourmaline uh, watermelon is very popular as a, uh, say, semi-precious gem. In other words, uh, we're not talking about diamonds and emeralds or whatever, but, uh, you know, still a small piece of it. Uh, I was at a recent rock show and they were going for a hundred bucks. Now the watermelon tourmaline is usually in a slice, so it's something you would put on a pendant or something like that. It usually isn't something you would wear like a diamond in a ring, okay? So there you go. We're going to continue as we're doing the big clean uh, to uh, look through and talk about minerals.